I haven't processed a capture inbox in over a year and my notes are more organized than ever. You see, I used to dread my inbox, that wall of random notes waiting to be sorted. Each one kind of requires a different decision about what it was, where it should go. And by the time I got around to processing them, I couldn't even remember what half of them meant. You see, most of us have been taught that a good note system needs a capture inbox. You get things out of your head fast and then you deal with them later. But the problem is that later often becomes never and your inbox becomes kind of a digital graveyard sitting collecting dust. So I created something different, the no inbox capture method that eliminated my inbox forever. And in this video, we're going to cover one, why traditional inboxes and capture methods are slowing you down. Number two, how to set up a minimum viable capture method that takes no more than five extra seconds of your time. And number three, some very smart Tana features that make the whole process fast and automatic. But before we jump in, if you don't have time to watch endless YouTube tutorials and you just want to build a high performing digital workspace that works harder than you do, then check out my Tana Fast Track course. It will get you up and running in Tana, well, fast. First, you'll learn all the fundamentals in less than an hour. Next, you'll choose from our six core workflow templates that are simple plug and play. There's not 86 super tags to deal with. You choose what templates you need to customize your workflow. And you also have access to our TFT community to ask questions and to get direct help from me, plus a load of other resources. Over 500 people have already taken time to fast track and loved it. So if you want to get on the fast track, I'll leave a link in the description below. So inboxes sound like a good idea, right? You're busy, you've got all this stuff in your head, you need to get it out of your head and, and put it somewhere, right? But the problem that I have found with traditional inboxes is a few different things. One, once something is out of sight, it's out of mind. So like most of the time when I had a capture inbox, I forgot it existed. And then weeks later, I'd be like, oh, wait, there's that inbox that I have to process, you know, and I tried to solve this by having the inbox on my day page and having it pinned and all sorts of things. But I still found that I just hardly ever looked at it. Right. The second thing is processing feels overwhelming. Right. So you bring up this wall of notes. They're all random. They don't connect to each other. You've collected them at all different days and times. Some of them might have context. Others are like a word. And you're like, what the heck is that? But I think the biggest thing for me is decision fatigue, right? So when you have a lot of things to process and you're trying to work out what is this, where does it need to go? And all of them are kind of random, right? So I might have a note about a project here, but then I have, you know, something that I've read that I want to, you know, explore more. Those are two different types of things that end up being really hard to process when you're trying to do it all in one go, right? So that kind of inevitably leads to a bit of decision fatigue where you end up going through your inbox and thinking, oh, I can't deal with that right now. I'll deal with it later. And that's what I kept having in my inbox is like when things got overwhelming, I would say, mm, I'll deal with that later. And then things just end up in your inbox forever because you can't make a clear decision on what something is and where it needs to go. And so inevitably what happens is everything snowballs and you end up with an inbox that you're just like, uh, close that down, can't deal with it. OK, so because I noticed that the inbox wasn't working for me, rather than try and make it work or feel guilty because I couldn't make it work, I just decided let's try and skip it all together. And that's how I came up with the no inbox timer method. So I can capture things with minimum viable effort. So it skips the inbox and goes straight to where I'll need to see it again. And honestly, it takes almost no extra time when I'm capturing, but it saves hours of that processing time later. All right, so the no inbox timer method works on one simple principle called minimum viable capture. We are not trying to make capture more complicated. We're not trying to slow it down. We still want to get things out of your head super fast, but we just want to skip the inbox. So basically I ask myself two questions when I'm building kind of my minimum viable capture system. One, what is this? And two, where do I want to see it later? So let's say I have a task that I need to do. OK, if I say to myself, well, what is this? It's a task. OK, so it's so easy just to go task right and then I ask myself well where do I want to see this later well let's say it's a task about a certain project I can open this up and add the project and then I'm done right so the way to set up your own minimum capture system is three things firstly we're going to set up capture super tags then we're going to add the connection anchor and third, we're going to add some smart features to make this even faster because I'm not about slowing us down here 
All right, so the first thing is you want to set up your capture super tags. You've likely already got heaps of super tags in your Tana workspace, but what I recommend is keeping your main bucket small. You don't want to have to think about 100 different super tags when you're capturing things. So I tend to capture kind of four different types of things that kind of come up every day, right? So as I'm kind of capturing, these are all the things that are skipping the inbox, right? So you've got tasks. We've already talked about that. So if something is a task, I just tag it as a task. And then I add my related project. If something is an idea, right, I tag it as a spark note. Really easy. And then I often have bookmarks and references. So I have like a reference um, or a reference note. And then I have journal entries which come up throughout the day and I tag that as a journal log. And so it's really quite easy when I'm capturing things to make a fast decision. So remember I talked about decision fatigue being like having to think about like, what is this? And so I would just constantly search from my inbox thinking like, oh, what is this thing? Is it a spark note or is it a project note or is it a this or is it that? So the more super tags you have, the more things you start to kind of you know, have to make decisions on. So by only having a few different capture super tags, you can easily say, yep, that's a spark note. Yep, that's a task. That's a reference. Obviously, I have other things like projects, you know, and things like that. And when I have those come up, I just tag them the same. But my main capture tags are kind of very, very small bucket of tags. The second thing you want to do is think about your connection anchors. Okay, so everything is a thing, right? So you want to tag your task, as a task. So if you add things into your notes without connecting them to anything, it's probably a guarantee that you're never going to see that thing again. So you want to create connections in your notes. And the, the easiest way to do that is to think about what does this relate to? So you already saw that if I have a task and I tag it as a task, I have a field called related project, which is basically the anchor, right? So I can put that task into the project and be done with it, right? I don't have to kind of process it any further. I know it's going to show up in some way, right? So the idea here is that for every one of your capture super tags, you want to have an anchor field, right? So if I go to my Spark notes, so if I've got a new Spark, and then I open that up, I can add it to a collection, which is kind of for me a bigger kind of topic that I'm thinking about, right? Other anchors that I often use are things like meeting and people. And so you can have different related fields for those things. So if I wanted to relate a task to a meeting, then I could easily come to my task and come down here, create a new field called related meeting. Come in here, you want to switch this to a super tag and you want to choose your meeting super tag, right? And so immediately now you've got another anchor where you can add it to a meeting and you're good to go, okay? So the more anchors that you have, the easier it is to find things, but you also don't want to spend all of your time when you capture connecting it to all different things. So just think about the main anchor for each of your different capture super tags. You'll get into this really great rhythm of capture, what is this? Where do I need to see it again, right? Really, really easy. But we want to make it even easier. So these are three smart features in Tana that is going to make it so easy for you to do the capture process. So the first one is default fields, okay? So if you notice in my task super tag, if we open this up, it already has a status of incoming. So I always know that every task that comes in is going to go into my incoming status. And that is set up through default fields, right? So if we open up the task in any of your fields, you can set a default. OK, that's why it says default value here. So if I wanted to set this as next up, I could easily set that as next up. And any time I create a new task from there, it will automatically have a status of next up. So I find this really helpful for things like statuses, but also if you've got areas that you use that you want to always have it you know, related to an area that can work as well. So default fields are so good for things that you want to always be something when you capture them. But sometimes you also have like a list of things that you want to choose from. So for that, I use command menu buttons. All right. So these are really easy buttons. You see one here, right, where we can actually add or change the status of any of these. So we're changing any of these, this field here, 
or we can add a date. So these make it very, very easy rather than having to open up a task, get to the field, you know, do that kind of thing. It makes it easy to capture different things. You might want to set an area for each project. You might want to have all of your main core projects set up kind of in your menu items. So the way to do this is if we open up task, just come down to AI and commands. And this is a super simple command that you can create. So I like to create these within a menu. So let's say we have quick commands, for instance, instead of converting that to a command, what you want to do is go to group, convert to group, and then open that up. Then let's say we want to move this into in progress, right? So I just type in progress and then convert that to a command. And then what you want to do here is the command module you want to do is we want to find field and we want to set field values. And if you open up the configuration, all you're doing here is you want to choose your field. So mine, I think is called task status. And you want to choose, let's say mine is next up, right? And so when you do that, now you get a really simple way to change the field. And it's really, really easy to kind of do that through a menu rather than kind of having to open it up and, and change things. So like I said, you can set this up for any of your anchor fields or any field that you have in your super tag. Now, the second way that you can use commands is actually to, as a filter, to see if you filled in a minimum viable field, okay? Now, this is not my idea. I actually got this from Andre Fogan. So he sets this up for any field that needs to be filled in, but it isn't. And it's a great kind of catch to see like, oh, okay, I haven't filled that in. So let's say for our task, our anchor field is project. So let's add this in. So if we come down here, I usually, I don't add these into a menu. They're just standalone. So let's say um, I call this unlinked, right? Convert that to a command. And then we're not actually going to add a command here but we are going to add a node filter and call this node filter. And then we're going to find our related field, our related project field. I just come over here and copy it, create a new field and paste it in. And then instead of choosing one, just go at not set. And if you wanted to, you could always add like a, you know, um, something there or because I really want it to stand out, I might add a little icon. And so what happens is now when I click on that, nothing happens. If I've just captured that and I see that it's unlinked or it's in a list on my day page, and I see unlinked. I say, oh, OK, I haven't added my anchor field. So I add that in related project and then it disappears. So it's just a really, really quick way. And, you know, you don't want to add it for every single field, but you do want to think about your anchor fields, right? You want to think about those minimum capture fields that you want filled in to make sure that you skip the inbox and you get it to where it needs to go. So that's command menus and buttons. The third feature that you can use for quick capture is autofill commands. So this means that Tana will try and autofill a field for you so that you don't have to, right? So I find these were really good for projects, people, uh, sometimes meetings, but it can kind of go a bit wrong. So let me show you how this works for the project. All right, so let's set up that autofill field. So you basically want to set up your anchor fields as autofill fields. So we have our related project. So we're going to open that up, right? And that's the same related project that's here, right? I just pasted it there to make this easy. All right, so for every one of your anchor fields, you want to come in and turn on AI enhanced field. And then I always switch on custom prompt. You don't have to do this, but it does help in getting better results. So once I do that, I then have a really simple kind of uh, prompt that I use. Basically, I say scan the task and insert the appropriate project from the list below. This is a search node, so it searches for everything tagged as project. And then I just have task and then this here just inserts the name of the task from the node, right? So if I open this up, what that does is it adds a little icon here. So if I click that and I can click it on any of my existing tags and it will show up. Now, see what's happened here is that it hasn't inserted it as a reference. It's kind of added commentary. So if that happens, we just come here and we say, do not include commentary return as a Tana reference, right? And then we click it again. Okay, so because I've mentioned Acme in the actual task, it will come up and 
he will choose the Acme project. All right. So that's a really clever way, but we actually don't want to click that button. Okay. We just want it to autofill. So we just need one more thing, which is an autofill command. So on our task super tag, we want to come down and go to AI and commands and we're going to scroll down to where it says on added. Okay. And here we want to choose the autofill fields. All right. Now, the only thing that I do is I come in here and I exclude some fields. So if I just only want it to set my anchor fields, then I exclude everything else. So I want it to exclude. And I just come over here and I just choose a few, right? So I choose task status. I don't want it to do that. Uh, due date, I don't need it to do. This. Progress. And I can leave related meeting on, right? Because that could be an anchor field for me. So I just close that up. And then next time I have a task about Acme project, I just do that. And then what will happen is it will process and you will see the Acme project filled in automatically. And so this is such an easy way to have your anchor fields filled in without you even thinking about it. So a lot of the time I'll mention a person, I'll mention the project, I'll mention the meeting, you know, whatever it is, and then it will find what I need it to find. And then I don't even have to do any more capture than that. So if you want to finally skip your inbox, you really just need to do three things. Set up your capture super tags, think about your connection anchor fields, and then set up some of Tana's smart features to make sure that that capture happens super fast. So by implementing the no inbox capture method, you cut out hours of manual work each week and you'll never have that sinking feeling of opening your inbox and seeing 47 things you should process again. Now, speaking of eliminating manual work in Tana, I talk about how to set up automatic weekly and monthly reviews in this other video that you should totally check out. And don't forget to like and subscribe the video if you want more content like this in your feed.